What is it that strengthens or impedes my ability to fulfill my promises? That might be the question you ask yourself. And is it actual or is it perceived on your part? Is it organization that robs you of your integrity? Is it integrity that robs you of your ability to keep your promises? Is it consistency? Is it endurance? Meaning, yes, I would love to be a part of that meeting and a part of that group. And then you write it on a scratch piece of paper and you forget where that scratch piece of paper was. And so you have no idea when it is. And so you're not part of it. Um, I, I would love to walk in the morning. And I walked six days in a row. And then two days it rained. And, you know, it was really hard to get back walking again after two days of sleeping in my bed early in the morning. Um, it, is it endurance, you know, walking? You Wait, I, I know it's nice to walk now in January um, when I made this promise, but you want me to walk, keep walking for the rest of my life? That's, that's, uh, that's quite a task. So there, this is an endurance problem. Is it organization, integrity, consistency, or endurance? And while you're thinking about that, I want you to think, have you ever been surprised that you were asked to do a job? That being in the church, that being in your workplace, were you surprised that you got the job that you applied for? Were you surprised within that job if you were promoted to a place that you thought, mm, I don't know if I'm prepared for this. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to uh, take on this task. And the question is, was it a good surprise or was it a bad one um, that you had to overcome? In, in thinking of that, I, I guarantee there's, you know, there's something in your life that's gone that way. You can think of the strange choices that God has made for God's leaders. And, and our example today is a perfect example. After our example today, God will choose Moses to lead God's people. Moses was a murderer. He, he was angry that an Egyptian was mistreating one of his people, so he murdered that Egyptian and fled and was out in the middle of the country and was called to lead God's people. He said, you want, you want me to lead God's people? King David was a murderer. King David liked a woman who was married. Uh, her husband made him upset by being faithful and by being honest. And he said, you know what, he's got to go. And killed that man. King David was called to be a king of God's people. Saul in the New Testament um, did not like Christians. He thought it was his calling to kill Christians in the name of God. Saul was asked to create Christians and become Paul. Saul was a murderer and was asked to lead God's people. It's so interesting when you read it um, from, a, you know, from a higher level um, up from that story to see, okay, this is how many times God has called these people to do these things. Before any of this ever happens, Abram and Sarah are called by God to move and start a nation. Now let me lay that out for you. This is a couple in their 70s that have never had children that are now, asking, uh, now been asked to go and start a nation. So um, it would be something for a couple in their 70s to move out of their house. That would be hard. It would be hard for a couple to move out of their house in their 70s and start with a new baby. This couple has been asked to move out of their house into a new location and start an entire nation. They'll have an enormous family that will contribute to an even bigger family. Um, if, if you've seen the Beverly Hillbillies entrance to that show, you've got a guy out in the country that is hunting, accidentally shoots a place that springs up oil. He gets that oil and capitalizes on it and moves to civilization. This is the exact opposite. Moses is in the middle of civilization in Mesopotamia. Everything that you would ever want is right there around him. And God's asking him to go in the opposite direction and go out into the country and establish this family at age 72. So he's got a lot of uh, uh, varying things happening to him when God's asking him to do this. The point is God wants people that welcome the idea of the unknown. How much do you like to change? It, it's not any fun um, because you have to change your routine. And changing a routine is, isn't a whole lot of fun. There's a certain number of people that their routine is to have no routine. So they, they just thrive on change. Most of us, oh, that's, that's going to be a lot of work to change the way that you want me to do it. No one has ever been called, if you're, if you're thinking about that line of thinking, no one has ever been called 
to sit on their couch and watch their flat screen TV. God has never said, Joseph, I've seen you. And I've seen what you're capable of. And I've got this leather couch for you. <laughs> and it's not, those leather cou- it's not those couches that are built for people that are 5'11 and shorter. It's a big one. It's a wraparound. And you're going to be able to nap on it. And I've given you a 70-inch flat screen TV that you may watch sports on it. Do you accept this calling that I've given to you? <laughs> that never happens. The closest that, to that that has ever happened was the very first promise that was ever made. God made a promise with Adam and Eve. And God said, I've made you this garden. It's pretty tight. I think it's a nice spot. Um, there's only one thing you have to do. And that's not do one thing. Your only job is to not do one thing. That being eat from the tree. They could not fulfill their one job, which was to not do something. They had to do it. And so that promise was broken. The, the only promise that was, the only calling that was ever in the neighborhood of, look, just go have fun, ended terribly. And so God has called people to change themselves and inspire people and change people. Um, that broken promise in the Garden of Eden has set the tone for the broken promises that we all experience, causing us any number of amount of um, pain and suffering, being the one that broke the promise and being the one that the promise was broken from us. Roger, I'm going to ask you to go and turn the light off because I'm going to show you a clip. Those of you that um, know my love for college football, and if we're talking about broken promises, I could go a certain direction that I'm not going to go today because that would be really, really predictable. I instead am going to show you a clip from uh, MSNBC. The Daily Show has already suggested this, so I'm, I'm not, this is not an original idea. But I want you to notice a couple things. I want you to notice how many times um, someone, their, their feelings were hurt. This is, this is a whole story of Conan O'Brien was given The Tonight Show and didn't get great ratings, and so The Tonight Show is getting taken away from him. I don't, I don't know a whole lot about it, but that's it in a nutshell. Notice that, and also notice how many crazy things are going on in the screen that you have to pay attention to. Mm, let's see. There we go. And we're trying to get this verified through NBC. Our parent company, Conan O'Brien, is now saying he won't do the Tonight Show following Jay Leno. It had been uh, announced that the plan was to move Jay Leno's show from prime time to his previous slot, thus bumping Conan O'Brien and The Tonight Show to 12.05. And what if this is actually the words of Conan O'Brien, a pretty bitter uh, end to this, David. He's saying that uh, he's suddenly been put in a very public predicament and that my bosses are demanding an immediate decision. And he said he's worked very long and hard to get the opportunity, passed up far more lucrative offers since 2004. And he spent literally hundreds of hours thinking of ways to extend the franchise long into the future and he says in this statement it was my mistaken belief like my predecessor I would have the benefit of some time and uh, to build this and it again in this statement uh, said to be released by Conan O'Brien it's a very strange letter David because it starts with people of earth and it ends with apologizing <laughs> for his hair so I guess behind the tears you have to use a little humor when you are a comedian but no humor within the uh, text of this if yeah, this is I mean, he's mad. Tamara, I just I want to expand on something you just, you just talked about in that letter. Okay, uh, hang in there with me, Roger. Um, what, did, what did you hear? Why was he, in the report, why was he angry? What? Didn't get what he was promised. What were some of the things he was promised? There were some that I bet, anytime you deal with a contract, which I haven't ever dealt with one, um, there's, this, <laughs> there's assumed things. Like he, did you hear him say, I assumed I would get the same amount of time that my predecessor did, suggesting that the predecessor wasn't that great when he started either. And you know what? The predecessor being at 10 o'clock might be killing me too, FYI, just for your, you know, for your information. 